All right, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. That was the shout of the parade gatherers that gathered on what we know today as Palm Sunday. And so as we come together in celebration, uh, we welcome you again, our home base here in Palmetto, Louisiana, our uh, home folk as you come and uh, you have driven in today. We had some rain today. We got a lot of wind going on now and uh, just the birds that are gliding in the air giving thanks and praise unto God, welcoming the people of God this morning. What an awesome sight those birds are as they are gliding in God's wind. Come on, get situated. You can park behind one another and uh, just ready yourselves for our worship time now. For those of you who've come early just to celebrate even in the music, what a blessing it is. Just a little heads up, next Sunday on Resurrection Sunday, we're gonna have a try service, three different ways that you can uh, come to worship on Easter Sunday. If you wanna be in the parking lot, you can come and park right where you are. We're going to back up the staging closer to the building. That way, the paved area, we're going to put some chairs that are uh, spaced out with uh, six feet in between. If you want to come and enjoy an outdoor Easter service, you will be able to come and to do that. But you got to be here before 10 o'clock if you want to sit outside. We welcome you all to be here at least by 945 on next Sunday. Anybody who drives up, at uh, 10 o'clock, you got to park in the parking lot and view from your cars. So just giving you a heads up as we enter into this holy week indeed. I want to direct your attention to our scripture reading today. Uh, Luke chapter uh, 18, Luke, Luke chapter 19, I'm sorry. As we read this first Palm Sunday experience as Jesus was making his way into Jerusalem. The parade didn't take place in Jerusalem, but in the towns and villages prior to getting into Jerusalem. Verse 29, as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village of head of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say to them, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the coat, its owners asked them, why are you untying the coat? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus threw their cloaks on the coat and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he had come near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. And so if stones are crying out, if cars and trucks are crying out, Hallelujah, we will not keep quiet just to celebrate. Feel free to celebrate and worship in your cars. If you are ashamed to worship Jesus in your cars, Lord have mercy. Where else will you be ashamed? My God, my God, my God. Oh, what a glorious opportunity it is to worship today, to come and to listen to uh, the proclamation again as we enter into Holy Week. The Christian church here in the 21st century referred to this week. We remember that it was on Sunday as Jesus began his entry into Jerusalem. And as he taught his disciples, as he prepared his disciples, as he, as he ushered in some ordinances that we observe uh, throughout this holy week, the washing of feet, the, uh, the last supper, and again on uh, 
a, a typical non-pandemic year, uh, we would gather on Thursday night for that Passover feast and the, the washing of feet and also communion, the Lord's Supper. And what we're doing this week as we remember that, we, we will gather via Zoom uh, to observe uh, communion, to observe the Last Supper, the meditation around that. And so we welcome you to do so, even as those communion elements are being passed out to you. We started this journey almost six weeks ago in preparation. And it's not that we are necessarily reliving it and have to relive it as if we forgot it. But we've been going through times of prayer, of fasting, of exercising various spiritual disciplines as we have been challenged. The spiritual discipline of solitude, of silence, of chastity, living a chaste life. Spiritual disciplines of meditation, spiritual disciplines of celebration and worship. How wonderful it is indeed that we can know who we are and to recall that and to double down on this faith walk, double down on this reality that we are called to be followers of Jesus Christ, to be aware of the culture we live in and how it captivates us and deceives us so many times. And so we take on these spiritual disciplines so that we can be followers of Jesus Christ who show love in unlovable situations and times that we can know what to say when is the right time to say it that we can understand that what a wonderful opportunity that we have and so we exercise these spiritual disciplines reading ourselves putting this flesh into check this flesh Sometimes may get the best of it, but it will not reign us. It will not rule us. It will not control us. So when our bellies control us too much, we know how to turn over the plate. At the very least, we know how to eat healthy. We know how to partake of salads, of fruit, of fresh vegetables, of putting aside at times all of that meat and all of those starches because we are controlling this body, our spirit person will be alive, it'll be well indeed. As we gather, we know that there are needs that we bring. We know that we live in a world that's a very needy world. And as we welcome Reverend David Tanner to lead us into our time of prayer today, we as a people of faith believe in prayer, giving God permission to have his way, giving God permission to interfere. Where there is sickness, we speak health. Where there is depression and discouragement, we speak hope and the joy of the Lord to be present in lives. We pray that there may be a fresh wind of revival blowing, that eyes, spiritual eyes that have been closed will be opened that they can see their need of a savior, their need to receive Jesus Christ. Those who are being tormented spiritually, they will experience deliverance. Let's ready ourselves for our time of prayer as we believe in the power of prayer. I just want to take time out, but also I want to share something with you real quick because I believe it's very significant and it's just very important in the middle of things on. So I'm going to ask you on this morning to just lift your hands. If you're in the car by yourself, just lift your hands to Jesus on this morning. Um, if somebody's with you, it really don't matter. I might sure that you lift your hand to Jesus. I learned this a long time ago. The lifting of hands, is it, it has several symbolic symbols in which it means. But uh, uh, number one, it's a of victory sign of victory where you let the devil know that regardless of what I've been through on this week, regardless of how you tried to treat me, regardless of how you tried to stop me, I still have victory in Jesus. The second part of it, and I said this, for, well actually that's the, that's the part of the second part of it, and it's a sign that the world uses it in sports and athletics, where the raising of hands is a sign of victory. But the last the thing I, I like the most about the raising of hands is a sign of surrender. 
I, God, I surrender it all to you on this morning. God, take all of me out of the way, none of me, but all of you. And this morning, I think in, in, in our life where we're at and where we're at in this pandemic, God, take us out of the situation that you're in control. God, you lead us, you guide us. God, we trust in you with all our hearts. And we believe that you, you would lead us not into our own understanding, but God, you're going to direct our path. You'll tell us what to do, when to do it, what significant moves to, to make, when to buy, when to sell, when to trade, when to be still. That's, that's so important right there, just when to be still, because I, I, there are often times when, when situations happen, you become you be in a panic and you feel like you want to do something. I got to do something. I, and if it's the very least, I got to go to the bank. I got to get some money. I got to do this. I got to do that. No, be still. Be still and know that God is God. He's in, he's in the place and he, he's going to take care of us. Amen. He'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. God, I thank you this morning. God, I thank you that you're the, the head and, and we are not the tail. God, I thank you that you brought us thus far in the midst of this pandemic. God, I thank you that we're moving from glory to glory and from faith to faith. God, from one dimension of uh, uh, of worshiping you to a new dimension, God, that you've taken us in a new era and we have a new manner in which we come to give you glory on this one. We come to give you honor. We learn, we have learned in the midst of difficult times, God, to lift our hands and give you praise. So I thank you this morning, God. I thank you for every person that's here on this morning, Father God, that made this came out to make a sacrifice of praise, giving you all glory. I thank you for these individuals, God. I thank you for those these individuals that's on social media this morning, Father God, that tune in to New Life Church of God, Father God. And Father God, I, I pray for healing on this morning. I pray for deliverance on this morning. Father God, I pray for healing of the mindset, Father God. I, I pray for that our hearts will be changed, that they'll be re renewed on this morning, Father God. So we thank you this morning that you're doing a, a new thing. And that you're using a small church from southwest Louisiana, Father God, that would touch the world on this morning. So we love you with all our hearts. We love you with all our soul. God, I love you with all my might on this morning, Father God. Because this good work that you started this day, I believe according to your word, that you're faithful and you're just to complete to the day of Christ. So we thank you for the man of God that you set up here in Pamela, Louisiana, Pastor Del Fontenot. We thank you for the good work that you're doing in him and that you're doing on him and that you're doing around him in this community, Father God. We ask that you would use him for your will, Father God, for your glory. Not for man's glory, but God, for your glory. So we thank you this morning, God. We thank you for our local schools. We thank you for all our teachers here in Santa Lady Parish that gets up in the morning, Father God, and, and, and find themselves in a position where they have to go out to their jobs that they're, they're, they're sowing seeds, seeds that's going to take root and that's going to grow one day, Father God. We pray that those seeds will land upon good ground, Father. So I thank you for those that make the sacrifice to continue to press through in spite of what the world says. In spite of what the situation says, in spite of what the circumstance says, those that will believe up in the name and upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we celebrate on this morning, we celebrate that, that Jesus has entered into Jerusalem, that he's entered into the place where God would have him to be to, for, for fulfillment, for total fulfillment. God, I that's where you would bring us to. You know, I'm in the in our life, God, that we're no longer immature Christians but you're bringing us to the place of fulfillment. That we would know the will of God, and Father God, we would be ready to get up on our donkey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and ride in to a spiritual Jerusalem. But the world would see Hosanna, we know that we're going to the place where God would have us be. So I thank you this morning, God. I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my might. We lift up those, Father, that's in government on this morning, Father God. Actually, they might live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and all understanding. So, God, actually, as you continue to direct us in this, direct the men that attend this fellowship, God, direct them that there will be strong leaders for them. Direct the mothers, Father God that are raising the young babies, that are raising young kids, that some that are bridging in the gap. I'd ask that you'll continue to watch them, God, that, that you would be able to kind of come to the ride, God. You said that you're just for a night. 
that you said you would supply all our needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So God, I trust you for that on this morning. I thank you that you're a provider in my household, God. I thank you're a provider up in this 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 sanctuary, this household, in New Life Ministry, God, that you that you're providing, that we're meeting needs in this troubled time. So I give you glory this morning. I give you honor this morning. And I give you praise in the strong name of Jesus. Let the saints of God say, Amen. take your Bibles with me this morning. We want to ready ourselves to get into the word of the Lord as we go back to Luke chapter 19. Again, this is a week as we begin uh, spiritual warfare, simply exercising the authority that Jesus has given unto us. What does it mean for uh, the blood of Jesus to have been shed on Calvary's tree? What does it mean for Jesus to be buried and to raise again on the third day? What does it mean in our life? What type of warfare do we now have authority in? Those who battle in the flesh ready themselves for their types of warfare. We ready ourselves for spiritual warfare. So as we uh, finish off this six weeks of love, this sixth week is uh, in reference to spiritual warfare. This holy week as uh, we don't wrestle as the world wrestles. Uh, they wrestle uh, against flesh and blood, but we understand that there is a greater and a higher authority in which we wrestle. The message today, our Palm Sunday message, is entitled, Seeing Peace Today. Seeing Peace Today. I want to pick up in the reading of Scripture right where I left off in uh, Luke chapter 19. And so I want to read verse 41 and uh, read down through verse 44. Seeing peace today. As Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground and you and the, and, your, and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Seeing peace today. You know, I have spoken for several years now. Many of you who have been a part of New Life Proper can recall that it has been several times that I have spoken about taking the church out of the doors. Uh, if you recall, uh, the youth even had a t-shirt a few years ago that says the church has left the building. And so we've been talking about that for some time. And lo and behold, we have um, lived this out the last year as we've gone through this pandemic. We have not gathered inside of the doors of the church to worship, lo and behold. Now please understand that the concept that we speak about when we sing, um, we are we need to, to operate outside the doors the concept about uh, bringing the church outside of the doors is to help us to apply what we learn inside of the doors and live it outside of the doors that's the concept it's not been about the church gathering outside, but we've learned and seen throughout these last 12 months that it has proven to be a blessing, that we have uh, uh, taken whatever has come our way. We have taken lemons and we've made lemonade out of that. 
And so, but our basic teaching has been, we are not to live righteously only inside the doors of the church, but we are busy equipping one another that we can live righteously outside of the church. That has been our focus for uh, taking the church outside the doors. And so it's possible for people to miss the transforming power of Jesus while in the church. Everything becomes, um, uh, a, a f every every everything becomes familiar. Everything becomes, we operate by rote. Everything becomes familiar. And unfortunately, I guess it's possible to miss Jesus even while we're having church inside of our cars as we will reflect upon our lives, as we will reflect about what we have been through. Know that the whole city of Jerusalem, they missed it for three and a half years when Jesus ministered upon the earth. He, they missed it. And so in our text of scripture here in the 19th chapter of the book, book of Luke, we see Jesus weeping over the city of Jerusalem. We see Jesus in tears. We see him weeping as he looks down from a hill. He looks down upon Jerusalem and we see him weeping. The city had failed to grasp what he was bringing to them. The city had failed to grasp the peace that he was bringing unto them. And so as a result, as the scripture goes on, as a result of their failure to see what Jesus had been bringing, there are now terrible consequences that lay ahead for the city of Jerusalem. And so even as we read through verse 44, as it speaks about the consequences of, uh, of Jerusalem, as a result of them not understanding and not seeing, what Jesus had been bringing unto them. I want us to take these moments that we are tuning in, not just under the sound of my voice, but I pray that the Holy Spirit, uh, that we are tuned in to what the Spirit of God is saying unto us, even as we hear words that may come from the vibrations of a vocal cord of a man, but may it be Spirit-led, Spirit-informed, Spirit-guided, that it can find our hearts challenging us to search our hearts. Jerusalem failed to see. See, there's a certain familiarity. We do the church thing. Line A, line B, line C. Okay, it's time to preach. Okay, it's time for the giving. Okay, it's time for the benediction. Let me get it going on. I'm sure there's some kind of trail ride. I'm sure there's some kind of bike ride. I'm sure there's something else that's going on that I can, I can change out of not just my spiritual clothes. I can change out of whatever it is that I can go and, hey, pass a good time. And so as we can understand what the, the purpose of Jesus coming, what it is, that is Jesus speaking to us in the 21st century? Is Jesus speaking to us in this post, this quickly to be a post uh, pandemic world? And we measure ourselves and search ourselves for what Jesus is saying, what Jesus is speaking to us. And so as we read in our text of scripture, this was Jerusalem's Palm City experience. It was a great parade day. His disciples broke into joyful praise for what God has done. As we read in verse 38 of that text of scripture, they broke into that time of praise. And today, even as you parade it, down our circle drive into the parking lot as you gathered and heard the music playing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord that you can recognize that, hey, there's a parade going on. I'm commemorating and celebrating another Palm Sunday as I gather together even on these grounds. And so we live out our Palm Sunday experience here in 2021. And so I want to help us move forward, even as we ready ourselves to re-engage into this world that we live in, re-engage with our families, preparing ourselves to enter into this holy week and how we will carry ourselves. I want to help us move forward. I want to help us live in victory each day. You know, it's so easy to find ourselves uh, just living for the moment, 
living for the moment. Oh, my light bill needs to be paid. Let me pay my light bill. Oh, I need to set up my doctor's appointment. I don't need to miss my doctor's appointment. I need to set that up. Oh, I need to, to, to I'm going through a crisis with my family. How can I get out of this crisis? I, I need to pay my bills. I, I need my stimulus check to come through. I need to do this. I need to get my school assignment out that's been given to me today. I need to get on my next high. I need to get on my next buzz. I, I live for the moment. I'm not feeling good. I, I need to put on whatever high I can put on so I can feel good because life is wearing me down. Living for the moment. There's a line that the world system tells us about how we can live for the moment and have peace for the moment and have joy and have a, a good feeling for the moment. There is a lie that the world system continues to tell our communities in which we can live, continues to tell every generation that comes after us. This is how you can have a high. This is how you can be happy. This is how what make you feel good. Don't miss it. Jesus is weeping over our communities because we've missed what he has brought. We've missed what he has brought. Peace. And so as we live through our crisis, as we live for the moment, I want to understand, I want you to understand that as followers of Jesus Christ, we don't live just for the moment, but we live for eternity. We live for eternity. This moment today may be a difficult moment, a challenging moment, but we will stand and face the moment with its pain, with its heartache, with its sorrow, and we will stand for that moment. We will not compromise what Jesus has brought us in bringing us a peace, a shalom. We don't need any shortcuts. Oh, glory to God. We live for eternity. We don't live just for current happiness. We don't live just for the next party. Now listen, I'm not trying to take your happiness away from you. I'm trying to get more happiness to you. We're training to live in peace. The shalom, the nothing missing, the nothing broken. Shalom, seeing that things in our lives can be healed and not just a cover up. Not just a soothing of the moment, not just a momentary high, but we are in training to see how Jesus fixes things. Oh, we sing the song, he'll fix it, he'll fix it, but we don't have time. We'll try to fix it ourselves. We'll try to make it right ourselves. Oh my. And so in verse 41 of our text, we see Jesus weeps. He weeps in verse 41 because Jerusalem failed to know what would bring them peace. They failed to see the vision of a savior who would usher in not just real political power. That's what they were, that's what they were celebrating Jesus for. Oh, he's going to usher us back into power against this roaming in power. He's going to sit us in, in places of authority. That, that's what they were praising Jesus for. And that's part of the reason that he weeps. Because Jesus has not come to set up an earthly kingdom. As righteous and as well-meaning as some of the earthly kingdoms may be, that's only a ref reflection of what Jesus is ushering in. Jesus says, my kingdom is within you, is within you. And so with a keen eye, we observe some things that's going on. We observe some things and knowing ultimately it's the peace that Jesus ushers in. It's not about setting up an earthly kingdom where we are in charge, where our political party is in charge. But he's setting up a kingdom within. We sing that hymn. It's a kingdom of peace. It is reigning within and it rolls within our spirits. They had no vision, the city of Jerusalem, that Jesus would bring them victory over the powers of darkness, bring them victory against some of those, um, those, uh, those things, those spiritual foes that would come against them. So friends, as we remember this Sunday, Palm Sunday, 
I want to let you know that I, yeah, yes, yes. Life is hard. Hear me, I understand that. Life is hard. Life comes with challenges. Life comes with so many things that are unfair. Life is hard. And it takes a made up mind. It takes a focus. It takes a belief in the Lord Jesus Christ on who he is. But you know, as we have that made up mind to follow him, to go through the hardships of life, you know, I plead continually, particularly with kids, with young adults, don't make dumb mistakes while you're young. Don't make, life is hard enough as it is for you to be making dumb mistakes while you're young. Mistakes that will make your life harder than it has to be. But telling our kids, telling our youth, don't to listen and to trust those that God has sown close in your life. To listen and to trust. You may not understand, but listen, we understand as, as adults, of those of us who have some years, some, some, some wear on our tires of life, life is hard enough as it is. Life is hard even if you live righteously. And so as we cry out, uh, life is hard and we let every generation coming behind us, you don't have to make some of those same dumb mistakes that I made, that some of the other adults made. You don't have to make those dumb choices. God has blessed you with spiritual voices, with mature, with mentors that can guide you even when you don't understand and you feel like doing whatever you feel like doing. Listen and trust. In following Jesus Christ, there is an opening of our eyes and we're able to see as we've never seen before. Before we knew Christ personally, we were blind spiritually. We couldn't see it. We couldn't get it. We, some of us were blessed with parents who would guide us in ways. We did everything we could to buck them, but they would guide us in ways of righteousness, ways that we can at least model Jesus Christ, even though we didn't, we hadn't fallen in love with Jesus Christ yet. But when we, when we knew Jesus, when we came to know Jesus, our spiritual eyes were open before, before we knew Jesus personally, we were blinded. We could not see with the proper perspective of life. All we knew is what we wanted to know. All we saw was what we wanted to see. We groped in darkness. Jesus wants us to see the way to peace before it is hidden from us. Before we go on our way and do what we want to do and live like we want to live, Jesus wants us to see the way of peace, the way of shalom that he's giving unto us. You know, I weep when peace is hidden from the one who decides that the only way to get high, to, 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 to find peace is to get high, to get a buzz. The only way that seemingly they can deal with what life has pressed upon them. I weep for those who choose that direction. I weep for those who see that the only way towards peace in marriage is to be abusive. I weep for those who see that that's the only way to raise a family. The only way to find some type of fulfillment in marriage is to put, somebody, to put a foot on somebody's throat. I weep when there are those who that's the only way they see towards peace. I weep for those who the only way that they see towards peace is to abuse their bodies. Abuse their bodies, be it diet, be it substances be it other things that they don't take care of themselves they live their lives saying well you got to die of something listen jesus modeled before us jesus died because he completed his purpose that's the reason we die when we can say as jesus said it is finished what you have given me to do O oh lord i have done that i weep for those who the only way they see towards peace is to live selfishly and turning away from searching for Jesus, they live a way that it's all about me. It's all about me. I'm going to abuse people. I'm going to get over on people because it's all about me. I weep when I see people that they think that's the only way that they can live. 
Friends, as we prepare to close today, I want you to know that God is here. He's in our gathering and in our midst. He's right there where you are in tuning in to the message. And God is visiting you today. He's visiting you today. He's here today. His peace is available unto you today. Oh, he can mend a broken heart. He can help us in our dysfunction. He can heal that that hurts us, that that keeps us awake at night. He's able to do that. And his son, Jesus Christ, is saying three simple things this morning. You may feel rejected in life. You may even feel rejected by the church. That the church spend, has spent a lot of time what you feel judging you, calling you away from its doors. I don't know, maybe that's what you're sensing today. Maybe you feel that you are unloved by so many. Maybe you feel that you are unloved even by the church. That you feel that your life, what you offer, has not been accepted. It's not been loved on like maybe somebody else's gifts, somebody else's talents or whatever it may be. You may feel that just in life today, you're all alone. You've lost a loved one, you've lost a relationship, and you're all alone, lost, confused, <clears throat> maybe even disoriented. But by going to the cross, I believe that Jesus tells us these three simple statements that I want you to take with you on today. Three simple statements. As you live, as you kind of seek and to search and to identify where you are today in life. Hear Jesus say statement number one, I love you. I love you. Wherever it may be, you may feel rejected by the Christian world because of a lifestyle. Irregardless of whatever lifestyle that you identify with today, hear Jesus say, I love you. As we are walking through these six weeks of love, we are identifying that there's so many things that we have not learned how to love as the Lord loves. That's been my challenge. I believe that's been many of your challenge as we've walked through these six weeks and understanding that, you know, John 3, 16 says that for God so loved the world. Yeah, not just love the ones who live right, but he loves the biggest of the wicked. Hear me. Jesus is saying, I love you. And he says, I love you un." Conditionally, unconditional. I don't love you if you get your if you give your life straight. I don't. I, I won't love you just because you started coming to church. Jesus says, "I love you if you're in church or if you're not in church." Maybe you have experienced a little of that in life. That understand that Jesus has not come to condemn you. He's come that you might be saved. He's not come to condemn you. Oh, as we erect our sanctuaries of worship, they're not sanctuaries of condemnation. They're sanctuaries of salvation. Sanctuaries that Jesus has come to love us and to proclaim that to the world, the unconditional love that Jesus has. Second statement that Jesus says, not only that I love you, he says, I want more for you. I want more for you. And so even as we understand what he's saying and what he's doing, I want more for you. I want more than, I have more for you than, than what you are showing, than what you have now. 
more than you have from whatever lifestyle you're living. He says, I have even more for that for you than that. Lifestyles that are lived unrighteously. Jesus is saying, I have more for you. You may think you hold on to that style, that pattern of life to keep you comfort. But Jesus says, I have even more for you than whatever you're getting out of your lifestyles that you're living now. I have more for you, Jesus is saying. I want more for you. Statement number three, I'm here for you. Jesus says, I am here for you. I love you. I want more for you. And he says, I am here for you. As you're going through whatever, as you're going through life, understand that Jesus is here for you. As you question, as you seek, even as you operate in disobedience, Jesus is here for you to lead you to his place. He will not turn away from you. He will wait patiently for you. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know him. He says, I am here for you. Yeah, we have questions. Yeah, we don't know exactly what's going on. But Jesus says, I am here for you. And he wants you to know him indeed. We're going to ready ourselves for prayer today. And even as we ready ourselves for prayer, we can see and we can understand what the Lord is saying unto us on today, that we can receive that. This is our Palm Sunday time, our Palm Sunday experience. So I want us to know that, that we're not here just to kind of create some type of circle of condemnation. Even as our message was last week, it's not us against them. It's not us against them. We are for the world. We are for what the world is saying, for what the world is doing, and how the world wants to listen and to move and to carry itself. We bear the burden of the world. We bear the weight of the world. And Jesus says, I want to roll it over to you. I want to roll it over to you. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we give you thanks and praise for an opportunity to call on your name today you're high and you're lifted up and we celebrate who you are lord jesus we know lord jesus that you have carried so much for us and uh, we're just eternally grateful for who you are lord god to know that we have an opportunity just to minister to you an opportunity to call on your name this palm sunday we don't want to miss the peace that you're giving unto us Thank you for this peace, Lord God, this peace that will pass all understanding, oh God. Hear our hearts and lives that are lived for you, Jesus. We care for you in a special way, Lord. And I ask that you would meet the needs of the lives of those that are here, those that are viewing online. Jesus, we know that you're weeping over the world that we live in. You're weeping, Lord God, even over some of our lives. We don't want to miss. Open our eyes spiritually that we can see and that we can know what you are doing and what you're saying, oh God. Hear our prayer, Lord God, that you can have your way. May you reign in hearts and lives that are being tuned and turned over to you today, Lord God. As we go through this holy week, Lord God, we celebrate who you are. Hear our prayer. Thank you, Jesus, that you want more for us. Thank you for being here for us, Lord Jesus, as we live our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to the Lord. May the word be yours, even as you take it on this, your Palm Sunday experience. Amen. Jesus is speaking unto us. May we turn his weeping into praise. May we turn his weeping into thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. As we ready ourselves for our time of departure, I want to remind you, we thank those of you who have prepared your offerings. We have some giving here in the front of those who have prepared their giving envelopes, and uh, we do celebrate that. Indeed, thank you for your support. Thank you for those of you who, who are live streaming with us, uh, that you... Uh, support us financially in a special way as you remain in prayer for us. We are so appreciative of that and all that you offer and extend unto us indeed. Thanks be to the Lord. And we enter into this Holy Week as Christians. We do it not just not just for symbolic carrying out, but we do it for a sense of um, how can this strengthen us? How can this further equip us and challenge us for the calling that the Lord has upon our lives for today. And so we encourage you to read through the Gospels. You can read through the Gospel of John, particularly chapters 10 through, through the ending of that particular Gospel. As you read, almost half of the book of John is written about the last week of Jesus' life. And so reading the word helps us to tune in for what he what we have uh, what he has in store for us. Uh, and even as we gather, we are mindful also that for us this week, for New Life this week, uh, again, there'll be no Wednesday night Zoom call, but on Thursday evening at 630, we'll have our Zoom call as we will have our communion meditation. And even as you have received your elements for today and you can take them uh, back home with you for Thursday as on the Zoom call. We can receive those elements uh, together uh, for that. Again, Zoom call is not just for um, uh, just for those who can view on the devices, but there's even a call-in number that you can listen on your phones. You can dial in that number, just hit that number on your phone, and you can listen. So it's not just viewing on a device that is available unto you. So that's Thursday evening at 6.30. Friday morning at 7 a.m., we will have our prayer walk, and it will be back at the 407 Nursing Home Road as we would join in at uh, the New Life parking lot as we will prepare for our prayer walk. Again, bring your mask. We're going to mask up and uh, we're going to walk through Palmetto in prayer as uh, we have done uh, through the year. So 7 a.m. on Friday morning on Good Friday. And as we always do, we will release you from that particular point uh, to uh, enjoy the, the weekend. Families, let's be, let's be uh, healthy, let's be careful, let's carry ourselves in an appropriate manner as we are destroying uh, this COVID-19 virus. And so families, we believe that you will do things in accordance uh, for what safety guidance carries for you. And uh, on next Sunday morning, same time, 10 o'clock, although we're asking you to be here at least by 9.45. Again, you have three ways to tune in to our services next Sunday. Those of you who are viewing online, we will live stream on next Sunday. Those of you who desire simply to drive in and to park where you're parked now, you can do that. We're gonna move the staging closer to the building and we're gonna set up chairs six feet apart uh, that those of you who just wanna sit outside and to enjoy the resurrection message uh, outside, you're welcome to do that. So if you're going to participate in our seating, we ask that we'll, there'll be a special part, a place to park kind of away uh, so that those who want to sit in their cars and to observe the services will be able to do that. So we're going to have a tri-service experience on next Sunday. Again, uh, seating will stop. After, after 9.55, we will not let you be seated. You will have to remain in the parking lot. Again, we got to be on time. We got to be on time. We got to be... There, there's 
No Sunday school that you go to on Sunday morning? Set your alarms and all will be well uh, with that. So we do highlight that particular experience coming up. So that's what our week will look like. Uh, remember to represent Jesus every place that you go in what you do as you grow stronger in him as you understand what he's calling you to do. Again, I have, I have the, our church's t-shirt here today on. Uh, those of you who have ordered them and paid for them, you can receive that. And on the back, our message for the year, Hope 2021 is lived out. And so those of you who have paid for them can receive them today. If you're paying for them, again, you can receive them. You will not be able to receive them until you are paid. you have paid for them. And we are beginning to take new orders for today. That new order will not be placed until after Easter. But if you want a t-shirt, let us know. Let Sister Bianca know, and we can put you on that next listing. Uh, if you will have your polo shirts next Sunday, next Sunday will be our polo shirt day as uh, we'll come together and, uh, and worship the Lord uh, indeed. Let's be mindful also that our... Um, uh, as we are come together also, if you're going to sit uh, in the services, you also have to come with your face mask on. As again, we're going to uh, begin to believe that we're going to practice that that we preach and to live out. When are we going back inside to worship? Again, just to remind us, whenever the governor moves us into phase four, phase four meaning that it's safe for all ages to interact. And whenever anyone who receives the, va the vaccination, who wants the vaccination, has had an opportunity to receive it. In our area, we've had a, this has been a vaccine site for us. This coming Wednesday, uh, those who have got the first shot will receive the second shot. We have a waiting list already of 20 people on that. Again, Mr. Dustin Miller will give the first vaccination, the first shot to 20 more people from the area who have been on our sign-in list. If you want to kind of join in there, we can let them know we have some extra ones. I'm just saying. And so we want you to give due consideration. If you choose not to be vaccinated, that becomes your choice. And so understand that whenever it's deemed that everyone who desires to have a vaccine has received it, if you are one who not received that, we will still go back in the building socially distanced and with our mask on. And so uh, that, that we will carry on for those of us who have been vaccinated and those who choose not to be vaccinated. Again, just trying to offer those services unto you indeed. So as we prepare, prepare to go, again, social media, we announced via GroupMe today that our services were still on. Those of you who are live on GroupMe, you got the message. Those of us who are not live, you kind of missed the message and you maybe you just came out in faith today. But today at six o'clock, check your text message from Friday. There's a login information if you want a tutorial on how to better use GroupMe. I've had to learn some things that GroupMe group me will not be an inconvenience for me. Some of the pinging and pinging and pinging, I've learned to tune the pinging down that I can still maximize what the messaging is with GroupMe. Welcome to this post-pandemic world. This is how the world is going to be operating for the time being, moving forward year after year after year. If you say it's not for me, understand there's going to be a lot that you will miss, not just about church, but just in life in general, because it's the times that we are living in and we're trying to redeem the times that we can still get Jesus Christ out on platforms like Facebook. Yeah, I know a whole lot of mess goes out there, but we can get it on Facebook. We can get it on YouTube. We can maximize redeeming the times that the Lord has shared with us. Amen? Amen. We're going to let you go to enjoy this afternoon and ready yourselves for our time this Holy Week, however you would carry yourselves. We're just celebrating what the Lord is doing. And even as we ready ourselves to parade out of here, we're doing so knowing that Jesus loves us and that we can live a life that will cause for him to celebrate as we recognize who he is. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, for our coming together this day, this Palm Sunday time of worship and of messaging. We proclaim the good news together, O oh Lord, and I ask that you would bless those that have tuned in, Lord God, via Facebook. Those that are here live, oh God, I thank you for their lives. And as we 
enter into this holy week, oh God. May we represent you every place that we go. We give you permission to have your way, Lord God. We'll bless your name even as we move forward, giving you thanks and praise. You are the great I am, and we celebrate you. Hear our prayer today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be safe. May the Lord bless you.